recording it. And if you don't want to be recorded, um, you have no choice but to leave the meeting. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna record it. So there we go. Hopefully, it's going now. All right. So teacher clarity, as described by John Hattie, as both a method and a mindset, and as a, a an effect size of 0 0.75. And to put that in perspective on uh, John Hattie's barometer or his scale, um, anything above 0 0.4 would be good because 0 0.4 is equal to one year's worth of growth in a student for one year's worth of teaching. So uh, if you're doing a, just a, uh, a good job of teaching, you're going to get uh, 0 0.4 with all your students are going to grow one year after they've been with you in the classroom for one year. That's what we want. Yeah. So anything that's above that is actually going to be beneficial. Uh, it, oh. oh, well, let me fix that. New share. I just told Bruce, I don't know about you guys, but there we go. Now we can, oh, now see, you can, now can see my see. presentation. There um, we go. I'm sorry, I had slid it out of the way so I could turn the music on. I forgot to slide it back. So, um, and basically what that means is that it's teaching that's really organized, it's intentional, um, it's clear what the, the expectations for students are made clear um, and they're able to, you know, predict, uh, plan, develop critical thinking, set goals for themselves and get a sense of judging their own progress. So you're giving those students that feedback that allows them to do these things. And that's very important. And as um, the, the great Yogi Bearer, the Yankees baseball player said, if you don't know where you're going, you might end up somewhere else. <laughs> so that was cute. He was one of those guys that always had funny expressions and, and things like that. Um, so, there's basically four practices that help create teacher clarity. Um, the one we're gonna be really studying mostly today is the clarity of examples and guided practice. Uh, but organization, you know, your planning, your, your explanations and your assessments are all a critical part of that as well. But these tools that I'm showing here are mainly focusing on this clarity of examples. And also we will be, um, kind of giving you tools that are gonna help you with this gradual release of responsibility, which I'm sure you guys have seen this before if you've been to any of the CNI trainings they, they typically talk about. Um, I apologize for this being blurry, but um, the I do, we do, you do concept, right? So we've all been, that's kind of been drilled into us over, over the, the past few years that, that gradual release of responsibility for our students. And then here is a picture, dang, I keep, my, my slides are like delayed. So I keep clicking, thinking I didn't click it. Um, <laughs> so this is the picture that comes from the book um, on the instructional framework. So uh, as you see this pinwheel model here, uh, all of these things are critical part, should be a critical part of your lesson. Number one, the center of that pinwheel being the purpose, the kids know the purpose of what they're learning about. And then they're getting a chance to practice. You're, you're demonstrating, you're allowing them to collaborate and you're coaching and facilitating, facilitating them as they independently practice. So this should answer, the teacher clarity should answer these three questions. What am I learning today? Why am I learning it? And how will I know that I learned it? So as long as you keep those three things in mind as you're teaching, you're, you should be demonstrating that teacher clarity and, and showing that as a part of your, uh, your everyday lessons, right? So, um, and then I also wanted to share this with you. That's not this, I found this, I came across this um, a few months ago and it's called the Jenkins Curve. And uh, actually it was a webinar I was attending by John Hattie that showed this to me, even though it's not his thing, it's some guy named Jenkins, um, but it's, it's showing the loss of enthusiasm for school as students move up in the grades. And you could see that when they enter school, they're, they're excited, you know, and everybody knows this. If you've taught K 
kinder or pre-K kids, how excited they usually are to be at school once they get past that separation anxiety of leaving mommy. And they usually like to be at school and they love, they love being at school. Uh, but that wanes throughout the years as they get into middle school, it really dips down pretty low. And it begins to climb up a little bit more in high school, but, but just keep in mind this, that as you're teaching, you know, is, is your classroom an inviting place to be? And that's become so hard in, in our concurrent model of teaching to, to be able to ensure that we're making that classroom an inviting place for all of our students, whether they're online or in person. Uh, and keeping your roomies and your zoomies engaged is, is a critical thing for us to be able to do. Hopefully the tools that I'm gonna to show you today are going to be um, able to help you. So starting with routines, the first tool we're gonna to look at today is called classroomscreen.com. And you may be familiar with this, but uh, I'm gonna go through it and show you what that is. So um, let me jump into it and you guys are welcome to kind of join me along with this. The website is called classroomscreen.com. It is completely free uh, for the basics. There is a pro version now, but the basic version does everything that I think you will need it to do. Um, so when you go to the website, you're just gonna go ahead and click on the launch classroom screen. And then I'm gonna show you some of the things that it will do. So it's pretty cool. And the fact that I love it has um, not only some kind of engaging pictures that will pull up for you, uh, but you could choose whatever background you want, but I think they always have great ones. So look at this, this is a, like the pyramids in Mexico. Um, so even just when you pull it up, you're, you're piquing students curiosity about, oh, what is that? You know, it looks interesting. Uh, and that's important. You might have a little discussion. It could be a great uh, little warm up uh, as the kids are entering your classroom, but you can change your background and they have just a variety of pictures to choose from. They have animations. Uh, or you can make it a solid color background if you want, or you can even upload your own background. So if you wanna upload your own background, you can do that. Um, and then it has some other great tools. The one I was gonna share first of all is the actual whiteboard that's built into the classroomscreen.com. And so you just click on the draw tool and you'll get this neat little whiteboard and you can draw right on this whiteboard. Uh, now, of course, practicing that drawing is gonna take some, some effort on your part to get used to drawing with your mouse. That can be tricky if you're on a desktop or a laptop, um, but the more you do it, the easier it will become for you. Uh, but another thing to keep in mind is you could, you could choose uh, to use a, uh, a stylus if you have a touchscreen computer, or you could choose to use your iPad if you have an iPad available. Um, so the background should be at the bottom of the screen. I think there was a question. Uh, it says background, it's got a little mountain scene on it. In addition to being able to draw uh, on here and you've got, you've got tools to change, you've got about nine different colors. Uh, you've got the ability to change the thickness of the lines. You've got the ability to erase individual marks or to just clear your screen by clicking on the trash can. So it's very simplified whiteboard, but um, definitely could be very useful for, uh, for showing the kids something very quickly as you, as you have a problem or whatever that you wanna be able to show them. Uh, in addition to that, uh, it's also got a text feature, which is kind of like a sticky note where you can write text. So if you want to put your lesson objectives up here, uh, you could put your objectives uh, that I will, we will, you will statements. It would be a great place to display that. And as you're showing, your, as you're teaching um, in the concurrent classroom, you could be projecting this screen and leaving it up for both your roomies and your zoomies to be able to see it at the same time. Uh, it's also got some other great little neat features of, built into it. Um, it's got a random name picker and you can just copy uh, 
and paste or just type your kids' names in here to choose random names. So like your popsicle sticks, you know, um, it's got dice and you can roll one, two or three dice. So if you're doing uh, particularly, I see a couple of math specialists in here, it be, would be useful for, uh, for math instruction when you're just having kids randomly pick out numbers to multiply or something like that. It's got a sound meter. So you can adjust the sensitivity of that and even set an little alarm. So if the class gets too loud, the alarm goes off and they can see the meter and you can tell them, I need you to keep your you know, voices down to um, level three today or whatever level you choose. So you've got different levels on the sound meter there. You can bring in media. Uh, in other words, you can bring in uh, other websites, uh, images, YouTube, embed something, uh, or your own webcam, if you want to have your webcam displayed there. Um, you can create QR codes very quickly to allow the kids to join uh, that virtually so they can have their own window open. You can also, uh, it also has these work symbols, which are kind of neat, which you can show the kids display for them. Uh, hey, you know, right now, uh, silence, you guys uh, should be working silently. Uh, now you can whisper and uh, you can use that concurrently with the noise meter. That could be really great. Uh, you can ask neighbor right now, talk to your neighbor, or, you know, this is a group uh, collaboration. So you guys should be talking together right now. And then the traffic light, I don't know if you guys have ever heard the traffic heard of the traffic light, but the traffic light would be if you wanted to uh, kind of, it's typically used to, um, to demonstrate in a live classroom what, whether the kids can have their devices on or off. And you, you know, red light means your device is closed and out of sight. Yellow light means your device is up on your desk and ready to go. Green light means you're able to access. Your, and, so that's typically something you would use in person when you've got all the kids there with their devices. Um, you can, you, I don't really have wrapped my back brain around how you would use that with virtual learners because they have to have a device to be on your, on your Zoom session anyway. But, uh, and then it's got also a timer built in. I think that's, this could be definitely something that could be useful. The timer can be set for any length of time and play a little time when the time is up. Uh, stopwatch. Could also be useful if you wanted to do a timed activity and some kind of drill. And uh, you can also display the clock as well as the calendar if you'd like. So you can have all of that stuff displayed and you can organize things. You can move them around as you want to. You can kind of shrink them down so that they will fit wherever you want them to fit. And um, it's just a great tool for classroom management. When you're teaching, uh, getting ready to teach, you can set this up at the beginning of the day and leave it set up for the whole day. And then, um, you know, have your, just ha change out your objectives as you need to as you're going through your different content lessons throughout the day. So it's a fantastic tool for just keeping yourself organized and helping with that teacher clarity that we, we were talking about. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, ask that you guys kind of actually practice uh, using some of these tools uh, after today, after you, after you, we're done with our session. We're only here for an hour, so I wanna get through all the tools today. But, uh, and of course I'm just working on honor system, but, um, but I'm gonna send you guys this presentation so that it's got the steps on what to do here. Uh, so, you know, for this one, the step is to launch and project. Uh, you know, then create your set up your screen and add the widgets that you need, and then start your lesson. And uh, it's got some steps here on how to do specific things. So if you're teaching directly using ClassroomScreen.com, uh, I put the steps on how you can embed something like a website because you might want to display something like this. Uh, app from the Math Learning Center, this fractions app here. Uh, you can display that and then you can be drawing out on the side to show the kids the fractions or whatever it is that you're teaching about. 
And so uh, using it in this way would be a very effective way to be able to, uh, to have side-by-side -side screen, so to speak, where you've got your, your learning screen or your learning website open next to your teaching screen where you've got your little whiteboard open and you're demonstrating things. And your mission will be to try out classroom screen with either students or colleagues. <clears throat> and then what I'd like you to do is take a, a screenshot and download the PNG of your screenshot and then share the image in a Wakelet for me. And so I've set up a Wakelet. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Wakelet. It's kind of, um, in my mind, it's, a, it's an upgraded version of a Padlet and that Wakelet is a collection of places that you can curate resources and make them available to colleagues or even students. And when you set up a Wakelet, I'll take you to it real quick and you can see what it looks like. You can add um, just about anything to a Wakelet. You can add documents, websites, PDFs, images. And that's what I'd like you to do is, is try this out over the next week or so. Try it out and add your, your screens in here for me. And I've added a couple just as an example to this. And so here's one that I set up for the white, with the classroom screen. Uh, here's a PDF of, of another tool that I'm going to show you, the Whiteboard Fi. Here's a PDF uh, or a YouTube link for uh, adding fractions video that I created with uh, one of the tools that I'm going to show you, which is Explain Everything. And so I'm going to ask you to do that. And you can do that by joining this site, and then you're going to click on Edit the Collection. And then once you create, once you click on Edit the Collection, you're going to be able to go in here and click a plus sign to add whatever you want to add. So you can add text, you can add a YouTube, you can add tweets, you can add bookmarks, images, PDFs, anything you want. But I'm gonna ask that you at least try to get a screenshot or, or, or put a little, a little text in there. Hey, I tried this out, loved it, or hey, I tried it out, hated it, whatever. Um, you can even add Flipgrid videos now to this. So you can add, or a Google Drive. So if you have a presentation that you've used that you wanna share with others, you can add that to it. <laughs> and so this will be on the presentation that I'm sending to you. Uh, if anybody wants to scan it and get that right now, they can and have that open in a new tab, but it's there for you. So I'm gonna give you basically three little missions to do uh, based on what you've learned today. Now we're jumping into the direct teach piece. And the next tool that I'm gonna show you is called Explain Everything. And Explain Everything is a whiteboard tool that basically allows you to engage students uh, through visually engaging presentations. Uh, I really have been a huge fan of this app. It is available online now. There's a web version of it. Uh, our district pays for a subscription for teachers. Um, but I'm gonna show you uh, the, the version that's on your iPads because it's gonna be the most versatile one. And so I'm gonna stop sharing here and I'm gonna jump into, uh, my, jump onto my iPad and I'm gonna share my screen on the iPad. Uh, I do want you to note that it's kind of cool. I can't show you until I've started it, but uh, when you pull it, when you pull up your Zoom, you're going to click on share screen and then you're gonna say start broadcast. So I can start the broadcast. But I also wanna show you something that's really cool about, and then now, so now the screen is shared. I'm gonna hit my home key on the front of the iPad. I'm gonna open my explain everything. And you're gonna be able to see what it looks like. So uh, when you first open explain everything, uh, Typically, you're going to pick this new unless you have something already set up. And you may you may want to do that if you're teaching. You may want to set something up so that you're um, you're ready to go. Um, and I've got a lot of different examples on here of ways that I've used this. Um, here's one that I did. This is with word work, uh, where the kids are. I'm 
able to let the kids uh, practice their sight words, you know, so something simple like that. Um, this one is a math lesson on adding fractions where I brought in a website and showed them how to do that. But I'm gonna show you today just how you can do this with a brand new presentation. So I'm gonna click on new. In this case, I'm gonna choose blank canvas. But I noticed that I can also, if I wanted to choose files here. So if you've got a Google slide show that you wanna bring straight in, you can do that. Or you could choose a template that they've got templates of graphic organizers and things to use as well. I'm gonna start with blank canvas. And then I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to be able to start a lesson. So what I would do is if I were teaching directly with explain everything, I would come up here to the little arrow it's called. And you'll see this on a lot of apps. It's a box with an arrow coming out of it. And that's gonna share what I'm doing here. And then notice I've got the ability right here to broadcast. So when I choose broadcast, it's gonna automatically recognize I'm on Zoom and I can start the broadcast right then and there. And if I want to, I can turn my mic on um, so that it's recording my voice. And now I'm ready to start using it. And so if I were teaching with this, and, and maybe I'm teaching a lesson on adding mixed fractions, I can very easily draw with it. I could choose uh, from five different preset colors, or I can tap a long tap on any color, and I could choose a custom color palette where I can virtually choose any color uh, I want on the rainbow. You, know, you just pick your color wheel. You can even pull, use the eyedropper if you could pull colors from images that you bring in to explain everything. Um, it's, it's incredibly, uh, incredibly versatile. The, the things that you can do with this tool are, are pretty outstanding. Um, for example, let's say that I wanted to take a picture of something. I could tap on up here on the plus sign and I could take a picture or a video of something. Uh, if I choose picture and I take a picture of it, these are some of my sketch notes. I wanna share that with the kids. I tell it I want to use the photo. It also gives me right here the ability to crop my photo. I can crop it. It even has a lasso tool. So if I want to be very specific about and just cut out one piece of it, I can cut out one piece of it. So I'm going to choose the lasso tool and cut out one piece of it. And then it's going to bring that one piece right in. And I can resize it, put it wherever I want to. In addition, and this is what I really love, is I've got this ability to, br to bring in a browser. So if I want to bring in a browser, and uh, let's say that I want to put in uh, Braining Camp, I can bring in Braining Camp. I don't know why it's not picking it for me. Though. Yeah, it's just... There we go. I'm going to do eliminations. And for those of you that are not math teachers, elimination is a great resource for, for math uh, tools. And now I've got that website kind of embedded right into my, my board here. I can resize it and I could still manipulate it. So I could show, oh, there's one half. That's what one half looks like. And I could demonstrate virtually right on the website that I'm gonna show the kids as I'm teaching. Um, a really neat thing about it too is the ability to record yourself teaching. And this is one thing that I really love because now I don't have to worry about recording my entire Zoom session. And you know, then I've got all the kids that are you know, snoozing or making silly faces or being loud. I can, I can click um, right here on the little red button 
and now it's actually recording my session as I'm teaching. And so then I can go through and the process of, you know, showing the kids how to, uh, how to find the common multiples. And the common multiple is going to be six. So then I can show them how to convert it. So I'm going to convert one third to two six because I'm multiplying three times two. So one times two is two six. And then I can convert as I want to, I just tap that hand to be able to move things around. And one half would become, see I'm multiplying two times three to get sixth. So I'm gonna multiply the one times the three to get three sixths. So now I'm ready to add. And if I want to show them, if I run out of room and I don't want to make everything real small, which I could, I could grab everything and shrink it down as tiny as I want. Um, I can choose right here, the plus sign on the bottom of my screen. And it's going to bring up a whole new screen. And now I've got the, all the room that I want to be able to write my new fractions. Two, six plus three, six equals five sixth and then after i'm done with my lesson i push the red button again and now i can go back and rewind this listen to it watch it again and you can see everything that you've done here now i will say uh, i'm using both the ipad and uh, the computer in this case i did not turn the mic on here, but it, I could have turned the mic on so that it was recording my voice independently on my iPad. And that way I've got a lesson that's ready to upload into Schoology directly. And it's nice and clean lesson without, like I said, all those distractions of what's happening in the Zoom, right? And so this is the reason why this is one of my favorite apps. And I think it's gonna be great if, uh, for you guys, if you learn how to use this well, to be able to do lessons and you can save these lessons too. It, auto, it actually automatically saves them and it keeps them on your, uh, on your explain everything as a file on your explain everything. But uh, once you're done and you wanna save that or move it somewhere else besides explain everything, you come up to your Shero again, you choose this export or you could choose a web video link so I can, create a direct web video link that will show the, the kids the link to the explain everything. But I can also choose export and I can export that uh, as a document, as an image, as a project, or as a video. And typically that's what I'm gonna do is choose video. And then once I export it as a video, I can save it to um, my photos. Or in this case, I love to, to do this. Or I could put it in my Google Drive. But I love to do this. I love to put it right up into YouTube. And so I choose YouTube. And then um, once I'm on YouTube, I can rename that and publish it uh, so that the kids have access to it without having to log in or anything if I make it into a unlisted video on YouTube. Um, as I said, you can also bring in, let me show you this real quick. Uh, I can bring in, um, files in here. So if I want to bring in a file, I choose file right here. Oh, it's also got a lot of clip art built into it. And I can also bring in images from my, from my camera or audio from my, from my camera roll. But if I choose file here, I can choose Google Drive. And then once I'm in my Google Drive, I can choose to bring in a whole presentation. So if you've got already presentations that you're using as you're teaching, um, you can upload them directly into your explain everything. There we go. Let's see, I'm going really slow here. Let me go down here and find a presentation that we could use. Um, look, I'm going to choose this one. 
because it's my favorite one because my friend made it. <laughs> so I choose this and, and once I get that check mark, I say import. And then it's going to um, show you how to, or it's going to give you the choice of how you want that to be uploaded into your explain everything. So I can upload it as separate files, which is typically probably what I would want most of all, but I could also choose it to be a grid or I could make it stacked where each slide is stacked on top of one another. And so I can write on one and then slide it out of the way and the next one's there and write on that one, slide it out of the way. Uh, typically, like I said, I choose the separate slides, but it's really neat the way that you can do that. I don't know if you noticed, I kind of skipped real fast, but it had the lock pages checked. So that, uh, that allows you to put it in there without moving that slide around. See how it's locked right now? So now it's locked, so now it's not gonna move around. And then I just click on my little arrow here to go to the next slide. And then I can you know, do whatever I want to do. So if I wanna add, I'm building a snow pair here. I can give him a mouth. Let's see if I can pick uh, an orange here. So I can have a carrot nose. It's not exactly a good orange, it looks more red to me, but, but you get the idea. I can, so now I'm able to draw and illustrate right on top of the slides. Now the slides are basically PDF, so they're not gonna be interactive, the same interactive slides like they are on Google Slides, but it does allow you to draw right on top of them. And then you can always go in and add your other interactive elements, such as shapes. If you wanna put shapes in there, you can choose different shapes. Uh, this star tool actually makes a shape for you and it basically anticipates what you're trying to draw. So if I wanna to try to make a circle, you notice it turned my circle into a perfect circle. And that's what I wanted, I wanted a perfect circle. And now I can pick my hand tool and move my circle, resize it, put it over wherever I want to, okay? So it's a really great tool for being able to demonstrate lessons for your students and i know we had a whole bunch of questions about it yeah bruce we have a pause couple of, right here yes yeah we have a couple of questions first um regarding can students join your explain everything and you know collaborate on you know live with you or no yes so if you want to invite students to join you're going to come up here to the invite and you're going to get a code right here so they can either open, explain everything and say, join the lesson and you give them this join code here. Or you can share the link here and then you can send them the link or put copy and paste the link into your Zoom or wherever. So I do, see, neat. I do see it has a, <laughs> a, a notice there that says it works best with up to eight people. So you wouldn't want to have, you know, your whole class Joining That's correct. And, and a tip, if you do use it in this way, it's, yeah, it's definitely best for a small group because they're all going to be writing on the same board. So that's something to keep in mind. That doesn't mean that they can't choose different pages on that same presentation, but they're all going to be writing on that same presentation. And also um, make sure that when they join, you tell them to mute their mics because if you don't do that, you're going to get a whole bunch of echoey feedback noise that's going to come through so and and also so we have a question this has to be used with the ipad and your computer slash laptop then so you could use the web-based version correct bruce you don't that is have correct. to use your ipad that is correct but it just depends like for me like i can write easier on my ipad with my finger than i can with a mouse so it's totally up to you and what you're comfortable with. If you that is, you that is the biggest advantage is the, the ability to write more easily for you with your iPad, especially if you've got a stylus or uh, maybe even an Apple pen. Apple pens are fantastic. Um, but even with your finger, it's much easier to write on an iPad than it is to try to do that with, uh, with a uh, your little touchpad or, or a mouse, right? Uh, the other thing is the, the, the iPad app is a little bit more robust. It does have many more features built into it. 
So when it comes to being able to edit pictures and uh, bring in uh, the websites that you can manipulate and stuff like that, um, it's a little bit more, it's just better on the iPad. So if you have the iPad, if you use your iPad for, that's what I, rec that's the way I recommend doing. But you can use it as a collaborative piece with students. So it's pretty cool. Um, and it's like I said, it's just super powerful. And the fact that it, um, since the district buys it, we've got the storage on there to be able to, uh, to add, uh, to save your projects for you. And you can see like how many projects I've got on there and some of the lessons that I have helped teach with students. Uh, I remember just this, this addition one with showing the kids the, uh, the, uh, the counting beads and all that, you know, this is just, it's a great tool. Uh, being able to write uh, the wreck and wreck. That's what I was trying to, couldn't remember the name of it, <laughs> counting beads. Um, and then being able to even bring in uh, problems. So I know CNI had made a bunch of uh, slides and things like that. And having the kids being able to, to draw, especially in the early grades where they've got the iPads to draw right on that slide was pretty neat, you know? And you could just replicate that slide for your small group and have six kids and put maybe put their names on it so that they know Oh, I've got to go to slide five to work on mine, right? And then, and then next kid goes over to slide six and et cetera. And they're able to work and do their work right on that slide. So it's a really great versatile tool. Uh, one of my favorite teaching tools. There's also, uh, I, I got it on my phone even, so I can do, I could do, I could be on three different devices and using it that way if I wanted to. And if you sign in with your Gmail, it's going to be you're tied to your, you're going to say you're on the enterprise account tied to Northside. That's where it gives you the full capability with all this storage and everything. They do have a free version that's um, web-based version that's free, but um, since the district buys it, we could take full advantage of all the features, the premium features on it. And then I just want to confirm one more time, Bruce, when you bring in a website to explain everything, you can still actually manipulate the website, correct? That is it's correct. not just an image of it. Okay. That is okay, super. Thank That's you. Uh, I think um, let's see. Okay. So yeah, so in the interest of time, I'm gonna I'm gonna close this out here. And then while Bruce, do I have, am, yeah, I'm on. Okay, while Bruce is getting the next thing ready, I just want to remind you that um, towards the end of this session, we're gonna send out an, a, a form for attendance. So you wanna make sure that you stay throughout the end, till the end, so you can have the link to the attendance form to make sure you get credit for coming today. Yes, please. Okay, so. Um, Let's go back to our whiteboard. Wow. Let me share my screen again here. So we talked about explain everything. Uh, the website address for that is uh, explain everything.com. Uh, but it's um, the the app should already be installed on your teacher iPad. You just look for that little icon. It's a purple square with a kind of a script E on it. Okay, so uh, again, I'm going to give you the mission for you to go back to that same wakelet and give it a try. So you're going to give it a try with explain everything and. Uh, create a web video link or export to YouTube and share that link in the Wakelet. And then what I'm hoping is with us getting to see all, you guys are the power, you guys are the experts out there. You guys are on the front lines teaching. So I'm hoping that this Wakelet can become a, a little resource site for you guys to be able to look and see what everybody else is doing and learn from each other. We like to show you these tools, but I don't know what it's like to be out there directly working with students as much as you guys do. I'm helping a lot of teachers directly and modeling lessons for them. And I'm, I am working with some small groups of students as teachers invite me to do that. Uh, but 
and I, I'm not out there every day like you guys are. So you guys are the true experts. So I'm hoping that you guys will try some of these tools and share what you're doing on this Wakelet. And that way it can be a place where y'all can go and look and see what, what each other is doing and get some great ideas from each other. Uh, so uh, I wanted to put this quote in here from uh, Dr. Catlin Tucker. And if you're not familiar with her work, she's an expert on blended learning. Uh, she says, in order for a classroom to shift to a truly student-centered, the teacher must shift away from an information transfer agent towards being a facilitator of learners. So the tool I showed you was more of the, the, the former, right? It was more of a way to transfer information rather than uh, facilitate learners. Uh, you could set, up, set it up and, and use that collaborative feature to be more of a facilitator. But the, the way I showed you just now was more of an information transfer, right? So this whole notion of uh, flipping your classroom, uh, she, she has a great template and I wanted to just share this with you. Uh, and again, this link, when you get my slide, this is going to make a copy of that flip-flop lesson planner for you. Uh, or you can type in this bit.ly address to get the template. But this notion of having a teacher-led session using something like explain everything to show the kids how to do something and then having the kids do an online or offline station. So flipping and flopping. So basically you're having some small group of your class working directly with you while another small group is doing uh, either an online or an offline station. And they could be using something like um, at, like at Puzzle, they could be using an interactive Google slide, they could be doing something with paper and pencil for that matter. It doesn't need to be online, it could be an offline station. But using this flip-flop model is something that I really super encourage for, especially for that concurrent classroom, because it's gonna be able to allow you to work with smaller groups, differentiate your lessons more easily, and also be work towards being more of a facilitator of student learning rather than uh, just a deliverer of, of instruction to kids. And so the two tools that I'm gonna talk about right now, I'm gonna actually have you participate in. Uh, the first is called Whiteboard Phi. And we're gonna do a little brief lesson with Whiteboard Phi together so that you guys can experience it as a student. But I also wanna talk about Whiteboard Chat. And there's, they're very, very similar to each other. What I will say before I get started is that uh, if you wanna keep it simple, and you don't care so much about uh, having a board that you could come back to all the time. Whiteboard Phi is my preferred tool because it is simple and easy to use. If you want to, if you want a tool though that you can actually save your boards and come back to, and that's free without having to pay for it, Whiteboard Phi does have that, but they're expensive. If you want to have that feature, uh, you, you're going to use the Whiteboard Chat. It is a little bit more complicated but whiteboard chat is free. And so um, I'm gonna show you the whiteboard five to start with. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start a new class for you guys. So let me go and hang on a minute. I'm gonna share my screen, a different screen with you. So you guys can see what I'm on. It's called whiteboard.fi. And when you go to the site for the first time, uh, again, I'm not gonna sign up. I'm not, I'm not promoting you pay for this app at all. I just want to show you the free versions that are uh, ready for you to use. So I'm gonna go new class. I'm gonna give it a name. Now, I can choose if I want to a waiting lobby I'm not gonna do that right now, but if you're worried about intruders, you can choose a waiting lobby so that you have to actually allow the students to come in. I could also choose a, a save mode for the students so they could save their work. At, but all it does is save the whiteboards as a, uh, as a PDF. So I'm not gonna choose that right now either. I'm gonna choose create class and it is ready for me to share with you. So I'm gonna copy the URL here. 
And then I'm going to put it into the chat for us. Hang on. I've forgotten where my chat is. Here I am. <laughs> where did it go? I know I have it enabled. Um, also, you could tell the students to go directly to whiteboard.fi. And then they're going to put this code in here, V5DH4. Or if they have iPads, you just display that for them. OK, now, copy here. Where did my chat go? Two, two. Thank you. And I'm going to invite you guys to go ahead and join. Just put your name on it. Here we go. I see people coming in already. There's the chat button. I couldn't. I swear I couldn't see it a minute ago. There it is again. <laughs> I think we go blind sometimes looking at our screens too long. And then, as you can see, as you guys are joining, I'm able to see your screens. Okay. And then when I feel like everybody's ready, I can click on toggle my whiteboard and I can begin to draw. Now, what I like to do when I'm doing lessons, especially nowadays, and, and especially when I'm introducing something new, is I like to tell the kids, have some fun, guys. So I want everybody to draw your silly face. And I'm going to give them a couple of minutes to kind of get their wiggles out and explore this toy, kind of get used to using it. And uh, if you'll take a minute to look at my screen, if you could split your screen and look at my screen, I'll show you real quick. It's already on the drawing tool by default when you start, when you open it up. But you'll notice the uh, little color palette here. So I've got a box of 64 crayons built into this app. So I could choose any color that I want. And then I've also got some shape tools. If I want to use shapes, rectangles, uh, circles, text, I can bring in pictures. I can do all kinds of things. So you guys have a have a minute to draw. Get used to use to the drawing tool with that. And let's see everybody's silly face. Mine looks kind of angry. I don't know why. I'm not angry. <laughs> Oh, Graciela, look at that. We got some artist in here. Love it. And that way you guys get to practice. Also, this allows the students, if you were teaching, uh, it allows the students to get a lot of practice using the tools before you start teaching. So if it's taking a long time to load, you might try just uh, closing it and coming back into it. Um, or maybe I'm at the max. I, th I think I, I thought it had a max of 50 for the free version, but I know we don't have 50 people here, so. Yeah, it could be just the Wi-Fi is getting loaded down. Uh, also, what I'm going to do while you're working on your silly faces, I'm going to add a slide for you because I'm going to, in a moment, I'm going to give you guys something to, to do here. Um, and you can uh, upload images with the free version. Um, with the... Uh, Paid version that allows you to bring in PDFs, but as I said, I'm not really going to bother showing you uh, the, any of the paid features because I don't want you to have to pay for anything. This is a crooked clock. I just realized that.
thermal clock diagram. But uh, now that I've uploaded my clock diagram, I'm going to push this to you guys. And I'm going to push it as a background. So in a moment, you should start to see an image of a clock. And everybody may see that image, or you may not. Sometimes it doesn't load, or it takes a little bit to learn load. So if we, if we have trouble loading it, I can click on an individual student's page, and I can push that individually to the student. And now that you have your page, you can write on it. And I will say that I've used this very successfully with small groups. I don't have any issues with it really loading up. <laughs> now I could, I could demonstrate maybe how to do um, a lesson on clocks or a lesson on fractions uh, using the clock as a model for the fraction. And I could draw or I could have you draw so I could tell everybody, I want you guys to show me what, um, you know, what, what one fourth would look like on using the clock as your model or to show me 130 or whatever. And so it allows the students to be able to draw right on that. And I can also add an unlimited number of slides here. Uh, I can bring in uh, graphs if I want to, a graph, sort of graph paper. I can bring in emojis. And the kids love this. If you wanted to do like an emoji writing prompt or something like that, you could use the emoji prompt for that. And it's got a, a wide variety of emojis available. And I can also, um, should I choose to, I can save these. Let me get this out of the way by clicking on the gear here. I can save all my whiteboards as a PDF. So if I wanted to do that, I could do that. Okay, thanks. And the one more, one more thing I will talk about is that uh, when you're using this tool, uh, you can choose any student that you want to, like um, Jackie, I see you're not, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So I could push the, I'm, I'm picking on Jackie because I know, uh, so I could push her the whiteboard again, or, if maybe like you've got little Johnny and maybe little Johnny's written a bad word or something, I could save that whiteboard as an image and say, okay, Johnny, I'm going to show your mom what you did. <laughs> or uh, you could even kick the student, <laughs> meaning that you kick them out because it's made in the UK. So it's a kick, but not literally kick, but kick them out and say that they're not using it anymore. So um, it does give you that ability. Uh, it has some feedback features, but those are, again, those are, they, it shows, but those are going to be part of um, the premium feature. So uh, I've got to buy a license in order to be able to use these feedback tools. So uh, as I said, this is my favorite tool. If you just want a simple tool for quick online instruction, especially good with small groups. Um, and then what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, close. Actually, I will. I'll leave that open if you guys want to mess with it another minute, but I do want to quickly show you the uh, the whiteboard chat. <laughs> so with the whiteboard chat, it's very similar. You have the ability to do all of these things. It is a little bit more complicated when you start using it. So I'm going to start teaching. And then what it's going to do, it's going to pull up my thing here. And it's got, as you can see, a lot more tools built into it. And I come up to the top right and I click invite, and there is the invite code for them. And here's the, uh, the QR code as well as the, uh, the invite if I want to be able to. Yeah, if I want to be able to invite you guys, um, I can invite you with the link as I'm doing. So I posted that link in the chat just now, or I could have them go to uh, whiteboard chat, uh, whiteboard dot chat themselves and enter the code G G. And that's, these are, it is case sensitive. 38 A and it's even the, even the codes are a little bit more complicated. They have to be switching back and forth between capital letters. But it does have a lot of great features in here. And the ability to be able to draw and add uh, 
multiple things to be able to download it, to be able to um, select different tools. It's really got, it's really versatile. Um, and it's, to me, it's almost too much stuff in here, but it's got calculators. Uh, it's got a tile factory. It's got the dice built into it. Um, all sorts of, you can do lines and shapes. Um, you can do polls so you can ask questions of the students. Uh, it's got a timer built in. It's got the ability for kids to be able to raise their hand. Um, I can um, customize how the students are able, some of the login features, you know, so maybe they have to, they have to be logged in. Maybe I want them to set up an account so we're always having the same board. Uh, I can adjust so the students only see the simple tools. I can enable the webcam for video recording. So there's a lot of stuff I can do with that. And, and um, very versatile. Oh, I even like this, the snow feature. So the snow feature is a 10 second pause. So if you wanna say, hey class, I need your attention. You push the snow feature, it starts snowing and they just get all on their board during that 10 seconds so you can explain something. Bruce, can you demo how to see all of the kids at the same yeah, time? Yeah, so when I wanna see all of the kids, I'm going to go down to my grid view down here on the bottom, and then I can see everybody's screen here. Um, so it's it's a more versatile tool. Uh, it does offer a lot more features. It is free. All of these features are free. And if you go to, um, let's see, uh, my book, I believe it is. It's going to show you, uh, and over here you go to manage boards, I'm sorry, not by book, you go to manage boards and then under manage boards, it's gonna show you all of, the, all of the ones that you've created and they're all gonna be saved in there and you're gonna be able to go back and look at them or use them again if you'd like to. So that's another big feature of this one. And like I said, it is free uh, it's uh, I would so I would say if it's something that you're interested in, hop on that because um, typically what happens is they give it free for maybe a year and they get a bunch of people excited and using it and then they start charging. That's what happened to Whiteboard Five. I'm <laughs> kind of guessing that might happen with this tool eventually as well, uh, unless they have like a big sponsor like uh, Flipgrid, for example, is owned by Microsoft and they they have a big education initiative so they never charge people for it. But. Um, but it is very versatile. It does, it's going to take you a little bit more practice getting used to all of those features on it. Though. Insert a PDF, right, Bruce? You can insert a PDF with, with the free version of Whiteboard Chat, but you can't do that with the Whiteboard Fi. You can only, you're going to have to take a screenshot of your PDF and then you could upload the screenshot. Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Let me go back and share the presentation because we are almost out of time here. Yes, I went, I went ahead and dropped the attendance form in the chat there if you need to leave right at 930. Yeah, and we have about a minute left, so I'm going to go to my last slide here. And then while Bruce is doing that, just a reminder that if you've seen anything here that you you know, want to use right away, but you feel a little uncomfortable and need more support, please do not hesitate to reach out to your technology coach because we would love to help you with this. Absolutely, I'm gonna emphasize that. And I know I've got a lot of my people out there. Uh, you guys know, I'm totally willing to come in and help you uh, even teach for you. Uh, if you wanna put me in a small group breakout room and have have me teach some of the kids some of these tools so that they get used to using it with me and you're not having to stress out and worry about it. I'm happy to do that. And I'm sure your other tech coaches would be willing to do that for you as well. So we love doing that. And it gives us a chance to get out there and practice what we're preaching and work with the students. And we love to do that. So I highly encourage you to reach out to your technology coach. I hope you guys will be able to take advantage of visiting my Wakelet and adding some of the things that you're doing with these tools. And I hope these are some tools that are easy enough for you to get started using right away that's going to be able to help you to uh, have teacher clarity and be able to get your kids kind of excited and using these tools collaboratively to, to make their thinking visible to you 
using these whiteboard tools. So thanks for coming today, guys. Uh, it is 9.31, so I went over by just a little bit, but I want to thank you again for being here. You guys rock. Y'all are amazing. Uh, kudos to the teachers that are out there busting their tails every day to help teach the kids in Northside.